Okay, so we will begin. Thanks for coming. We are going to do some pranayama to start the practice, and I can see those who, who have been attending, it's pretty consistent, like I was saying. So what we can do is go to the direct practice with a little bit less verbal instruction, a little bit more silence in the practice. And then I'd like to take a look at some things related to the hips and pelvis, because I had a good question about this yesterday. It was sent to me by text. So if you have two yoga blocks, that's also gonna be helpful for the practice when we go to this um, research mode into the hips and pelvis. So please take a comfortable seat, an upright seat. And rest your hands on your lap. Let your eyes close. Or you could choose to just have the gaze be kind of down and fuzzy, I like to say. So it's not, you're not piercing a hole in the floor that you're looking at. So let's imagine for a moment that if the mind were like a pendulum swinging right and left, that when you come to your seat, that pendulum is going to get ever so slightly more still and more still and more still yet again. to support the inner stilling of the mind. It's helpful if we practice what yoga calls non-attachment, non-grasping, non-clinging. So not being attached to certain thoughts on either side of your pendulum, and also not grasping for the pendulum to be still. So there's an elegant kind of surrender. And what you might be noticing today is that that surrender is more or less accessible to you. It's either more immediate or less immediate. Maybe it's a changeable thing in your life based on incoming information or how you slept or how you ate. Whatever you're observing, the way that you observe it can also be your yoga. So observing it with interest, with curiosity, even with warmth like you're studying what you're seeing, not studying like evaluating to find out what's wrong with you, but studying like observing and seeing that some actions have outcomes, like certain thoughts, sleep patterns, food patterns, movement or work patterns, they have outcomes. So with this in your heart and your mind, please bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. And we'll chant Sahana Vavatu together. Let's begin. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Punaktu Savidyam Karava Vahai Tejasvina Vari Tamastu Mavid Vesha Vahai Om Sahana Vavatu 
your hands, keeping the eyes closed, come upright with your posture. Now we'll do Bastrika with three inhale suspensions, exhaling both, then exhaling left, then exhaling right. Bastrika is first. Let's begin. both nostrils up to suspension. Release the bandhas, exhale through both nostrils. Inhale both up to suspension. Close the right, exhale left. Inhale both. Close the left, exhale right. Deeply relax.
Now we're going to be using the arms. I'm going to scoot back. So we're going to inhale. The hands will be open as you go up and then exhale to come down. Brisk through the nose in both directions. Let's begin. Five, four, three, two, one. Now rest the arms and inhale lower, middle, and upper. And then suspend. Release the bandhas. Exhale through both nostrils all the way to the end, toning the low abdomen as you do so. Inhale, lower, middle, upper to suspension. Close the right, exhale left. Inhale both. Close the left, exhale right. Deeply relax. Now we're going to practice inhaling left nostril, exhaling right, inhale right, exhale left. When you inhale, allow the nostril to be open completely according to your nostrils. When you exhale, close the nostril partway. So you're exhaling out of a partially open nostril. Use the strength of your exhale so that you won't get breathless. So close the right, open the left completely and inhale left side. Now close the left completely, open the right partially, exhale right side with strength. Open the right, inhale right. Close the right completely, open the left only partially. Exhale left with strength. Inhale left. Exhale right.
open right, inhale. Partial left, exhale. Open left, inhale. Partial right, exhale. Open right, inhale. Partial left, exhale. Then deeply relax. It's possible that you'll have a natural inclination for your attention to rest between the eyebrows at the sixth chakra. Keeping some awareness of the sort of inner quiet that may be happening for you. When you're ready to, please open your eyes and come up to standing. Okay. I had a good question about the hips and pelvis, and I said you'll need two blocks for this part of the practice. Let's come up to stand and take a stance just as wide as your mat. So your, your feet are gonna be wider than your hips are. And let's do the feet parallel. Unless there's some reason, and these are valid reasons, that your ankles may need you to have the toes turned slightly out. And then please come down with this sort of wide-footed Uttanasana. You can relax the arms like a rag doll. Energize your leg muscles. Let's press into the big toes and do your best to lift the inner arches when the big toes press down. And also root into your heels and see if the arch muscles, which hopefully are visible to you, that they might gently come up, not because you're rolling the ankles out but because you're lifting the inner stirrup of the arches up. And it may help you to also tone the upper inner thighs. So one way to do that is to gently press your feet kind of towards each other on the mat as if they were gonna fold the mat, but the word gentle was in that sentence. So with that possible tone from the inner arches up the inseam of the legs, let's take a deep breath in through the nose And then exhale also out through the nose. And check to see for yourself if you maintain the tone of the inseam of the legs, is it possible that on the inhale, 
the pelvic floor can receive the inhale and even gently expand. And then on the exhale, there'll be a kind of consistent toning of the pelvic floor, more like a dimmer switch, not like an on-off switch. When you inhale, how you release the tone of the pelvic floor matters. So it's not an abrupt transition. Now shift your body weight into your left leg more than your right. Shift your hips to your left and see if it's possible that you might sort of stack your left hip over your left ankle and your right leg would seem like it's a little bit longer than your left, but your left hip would feel higher than your right. Notice how it changes the shape of the pelvic floor. Keep the breath consistent and begin to press into your left foot more firmly so that that downward action shifts your pelvis to your right. And slowly you're gonna end up actually standing over your right ankle or going in that direction. And see again, it might be possible that you could sense the inhale coming down to the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor has changed shape by the position that we're in. And then exhale, press into your right foot and use the strength of your right leg pressing down to help you bring your hips back to center. Place your hands up on your hips and pelvis and please rise up to standing. And then take notice when you come to mountain pose, what is the feeling tone inside, in the mind and the body. We're gonna step into Surya Namaskar. So keeping that in mind, what we were just exploring there, we're gonna to come to Surya Namaskar. I'm just gonna to try to get my hair off of my face. It might not work. I'm, it, I'm due for a haircut. So you may have to watch hair on face, but you should be looking inward anyway. <laughs> okay. So in Surya Namaskar, we're gonna start with the feet hip distance apart. So hip distance is measured by the hip bones right here, not by the outer hip here, but this. When you bend, that's where the thigh comes into the femur, and that's what you're gonna call hip distance. Join your hands together, please. Now coming into the Ujjayi breath, let's have the sound be the most subtle that you need today for your mind to be present here. And the sound can be like the white noise machine between you and your thoughts or you and the outside world. And that white noise machine gives you access to a place of refuge inside. Let's begin the sun citation. Inhale, hands down, palms forward, rise up. Exhale, chair pose. If you were here yesterday, you've heard this already. Gaze forward and down on the floor, keeping your gaze there. Inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. Exhale, forward and down, Uttanasana. Gaze past your feet towards the back edge of your mat. Inhale, glide forward, gaze between your big toes. Exhale, left toes straight back and the feet are still hip distance apart, though they could be wider. Inhale, rise up and gaze at the point in front of you that you chose before. You know, let's stay for a few breath cycles and try to sense how the pelvis has shifted the shape of the pelvic floor. Your left leg's in extension and your right leg is in flexion. There will be slight differences, right hemisphere to left hemisphere in the pelvic floor. Let the breath be smooth, the sound, whatever subtle level you need, or more dynamic if you have to turn up the sound of the white noise machine in the inner ear. And when you exhale now, sweep the arms wide. As you come down, gaze past your right foot towards your left big toe, towards the back of the mat. Inhale, step forward, heart forward, gaze between your toes. 
Exhale, right toes back, gaze at the back edge of your mat. Inhale, glide your eyes forward as you rise up. Gazing down at the place on the floor ahead of you. When you're gonna do studies, you're like a researcher, you wanna have as few components to study so you're getting a specific area to research. Right now that can be the pelvic floor. But if the mind is very distractible, it's helpful to place your eyes in one location and to use the ujjayi sound to keep the mental mayhem at bay. And when you next exhale, sweep your arms wide, glide your eyes down and towards the back edge of your mat. Inhale, step forward, heart forward, gaze between your toes. Exhale, deeply bow towards your legs, gazing back. Inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. Gazing forward on the floor. Exhale, hands to your heart. Your hands will pass down through your visual field, but they don't distract your eyes. Now inhale. Ukatasan, chair pose. Gaze down between the toes this time. Inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. Gaze slightly forward. Exhale, Uttanasana. Glide your eyes towards the back of the mat. Inhale, glide your heart forward. All of these poses are symmetrical. Now exhale, left toes back. The pose is asymmetrical. Inhale, rise up. Gaze at the front point. Now inhale, straighten your right leg. Exhale, bend your right knee. That's the only change you're making here is your right femur. So inhale to straighten. It does change the relationship between your ilium and your thigh bone. Exhale to bend. Keep your eyes steady and the breath sound steady. One more time, inhale to straighten. Exhale to bend. Now holding steady, inhale to airplane pose. Gaze back at the back edge of your yoga mat. With your torso touching your thigh and your back leg, now the back leg is in a little bit less extension and the front leg is in quite a bit more flexion. And that changes the pelvic floor again. Let's touch down, inhale, float forward. And exhale, right toes back. Inhale to rise. Steady your eyes and the sound of the breath. And then we'll inhale, straighten the left leg. Energize all of your leg muscles. They are resources for you. Exhale to bend. And three times more, please. So at your body's pace, of course, not just my pace. Notice the kind of influence you're having. So you are like a researcher or an observer. You're studying. When you're studying, it's not the same as evaluating yourself, nor does studying imply judging. So the next time you exhale and you're gonna bend your left knee, go ahead and pause there, and then sweep the arms wide and come forward to airplane pose. Gaze at the back of your mat. So the right leg is in much less extension. Left leg is in much more flexion. And touch the two blocks. And let's inhale backwards, downward facing dog pose. Now you have a symmetrical pose again. So when you reach your hips high in your dog pose, notice when you get there, what is it like? Things are symmetrical. Does anything shift for your mind or your breath? Yeah. 
Thank you for your inwardness and your concentration. Let's inhale and come forward to plank pose, please. So plank is a pose where you have your feet again, hip distance apart, connect to your inner arches. You can imagine squeezing the feet towards each other again so the inner thighs are more obvious to you. Lengthen your tailbone back towards your heels. Now keeping both arms strong, step over one foot so you're pointing the toes behind you. Put the top of the foot on the floor. Bring both knees down together. Step over the other foot, your toes are pointed. This is called seal pose. And it's also symmetrical. Now both legs are in extension. So try to sense the shape of the pelvic floor. Breathe in. And then exhale and glide forward to cobra pose. And the thighs will be in a little bit less extension because your hips are gonna be on the floor with your thighs. And then inhale, glide back up to seal pose. And exhale, roll into plank pose. Now your legs are not an extension, they're neutral. Right, neutral. And then inhale, raise your hips high into dog pose, which means you're gonna be in flexion and still symmetrical. Good, yeah. Nice to see your attention and your pace. No one is rushing. Okay, now with the awkward foot, step one foot up to the front of your mat, then the other one, and come into Uttanasana. So your feet are gonna be hip distance apart again. And then inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. And exhale, hands to your heart. Now I'd like you to take two blocks on the floor so that your blocks are sitting like a little diamond bench like this. So they're gonna sit. Once I'm sitting down, you will not be able to see them still. So let me point again, the blocks are gonna be like this. They may or may not be absolutely touching. It's gonna to be up to you for that. And first, I'd like you to sit in Baddha Konasana. And that means bound angle pose, not bound ankle which is what I thought for a long time. <laughs> I didn't learn yoga by seeing it written down. So I thought the teacher was saying bound ankle pose, not bound angle pose. Okay, soles of the feet together. So the blocks are, you're actually sitting on the blocks at the outside of the trochanter and the thigh bone, but the pelvic floor and the tailbone have no contact from the blocks. And then when you come forward, you're gonna roll a little bit towards mostly the thigh bones and the greater trochanters, those bony things back there may have less pressure on them. Neither the sitting bones nor the tailbone will touch the blocks nor will the pubic bones. Okay, so let's, when we come forward here to Baddha Konasana, start practicing awareness of your exhale and especially how the end of your exhale it's not like a day crescendo and then petering out. The end of the exhale can be smooth and you'll sense the tone of the low belly. And then there'll be a gentle exhale pause. We don't want the inhale to be abrupt. Now place your hands on your ankles in the bound angle pose. 
and rise up to sitting. And I'm gonna ask you to sit cross-legged. It's called Sukhasana. Please put the right shin on the outside and the left shin on the inside. Now your knees are closer. So the shape of the pelvic floor is going to be different. And we're gonna start by coming forward again. Please don't come forward to the point of falling off of your blocks. As far as I know, none of you is actually a T-Rex, so your arms and your hands can reach the floor here. And keeping your hips grounded, walk your hands to your left and stretch your right hand out. So you might feel into your right lower back, right side waist. And try to sense how the breath comes down to greet the right hemisphere of the pelvic floor. And then the breath can fill out the right hip bone, right ilium bone, up into your right low back, the inner belly. And then walk yourself back up to center. So now how you are sitting, you've got two blocks both on the flat setting. Lean into your left hip, please, and put the block for your right hip on the medium setting. Fold your left foot under and sit on the diagonal of the right block. So you've got your left leg and hip supported by the block and the block under your right hip is right between where the thigh, then there's this thing called the neck of the trochanter and then there's your greater trochanter and then there's your ilium bone. So where the block is on me is right here. So here is the trochanter, little um, fleshy spot, and then a sitting bone. And I'm in that little um, valley, <laughs> sitting on the beveled edge of the block. Okay, raise your left arm up. And cross your left elbow over your right knee. And for this one, gaze down past your right thigh. So you're adding what we would call spinal flexion. You're also adding compression to your right low belly and your right hip on purpose. And you're welcome to have the head be relaxed towards the floor. And for those of you for whom your fingers reach the floor, you can touch. For those of you for whom your fingers don't reach, it's okay. Notice the different shape of the pelvic floor now. Okay, and then with your left arm across your right thigh, rise up so your spine's gonna be upright and more like a traditional twist to the right. But place your right hand on your right thigh to support the twist. And because you're sitting up too high to reach the floor behind you. One more time, exhale. And then rotate around. Let's put the right block back to its flat setting and come down to sit cross-legged. Pause to notice. Now staying with the right hip, put the block back up, please on the medium setting. Keep the left foot under like this. And with the right foot now, I'd like you to tip your knee open. So the block is back there so that you can't just keep going and you're not going to fall to your right. But tip the knee open so you're strength lengthening the right inner thigh and strengthening the left outer hip, right outer hip, excuse me. 
and walk forward, trying to keep your right knee open. Your ability to press your right knee open here is going to be a combination of the flexibility of the upper inner right thigh, the pelvic floor, the strength of your outer right hip, specifically the rotator muscles, they're called the deep six. You're also, perhaps you're encountering the flexibility of your right lower back or your right sideways too. Okay, and let's please rise back up to sitting. And once more, put the block under your right hip on the flat setting. Cross your ankles, right foot in front, and come back to Sukhasana. Notice what's happening in the two hemispheres of the pelvic floor. And now change the cross of your ankles. So you're gonna have your left ankle on the outside and right ankle on the inside. And we're gonna begin by coming forward. And let your research mind stay with curiosity, with intrigue, but free from judgment, please. We are purposely doing this compression on the hips and then there's this decompression. We're also purposely using poses that are a little bit asymmetrical and then a lot asymmetrical. This one is actually asymmetrical because one ankle's in front of the other. Please walk to your right. Reach out with your left hand and lengthen your left lower back. Walk yourself up to sitting. So that is asymmetrical, but less asymmetrical than where we're going. So now put your right foot under. You're gonna keep your right hip on the block and the left one comes up to the medium setting. So you're sitting in that little valley I talked about before between the bony landmarks. And then raise your right arm up towards the ceiling. And as you cross over, deliberately bring more flexion. So <laughs> as if you were an elephant practicing this pose and you're gonna bow your trunk over your left outer thigh. You may be noticing the myofascial plane on the back of the body Sometimes you'll even notice it from like the right hip bone, the ilium, up the back side towards your shoulder blade. Maybe beyond that up to the base of your skull. And then ask you to glide up so you're sitting more upright with your spine and your torso. Place your left hand on your left thigh and support the twist to your left. So now the spine's more vertical and the twist does continue with the compression in the lower belly.
And let's rotate around to face forward and make the block flat one more time. So you can come to your observation mode. It's very important when you're studying, like a scientist or a researcher, that you're also observing. Oh, okay, what's happening now? And now placing the right foot on the inside and the left block up medium. So you've got your hip there and you can open the left knee out to the side. And the block just, it's got you in this uneven surface, but it also keeps you from falling to your left or being able to counterbalance because I want you to actually open, not to counterbalance. I mean, as if you were opening a door, you want the door frame to be stable and the door opens. So the pelvis is stable, your left thigh opens, and then you can walk forward. And when you're ready to, you can glide back up to sitting. And one more time, let's take both blocks flat and come to Sukhasana, so your left shin is on the outside. And you can observe again. There may also be like a swirl of energy moving through your body right now, untying some of the myofascial systems at the base of the pelvis and letting that part of the body feel like it's getting attention. You may have activated some held prana is now able to move through. And let's come so lying on your back, please, for a moment with the knees bent, we're gonna get ready for Shavasana. So I'll do a side view. And this afternoon, we'll just do the, um, the plain <laughs> version of Shavasana, the classical version of Shavasana. So please lie on your back. And if your knees bent, you can put your feet on the floor. Place your attention down at the pelvic floor. And notice what's happening with the breath. And the inhale, lightly touching the pelvic floor. Exhale, lightly toning the pelvic floor. Now, if you've been here for the last several classes where we're teaching the exhale suspension. This is actually a great time to try it out, lying on your back to see if there's what I called the other day, the thread on which the bandhas, like the beads of the mala, the thread on which the bandhas are placed. So a reminder that exhale suspension is a full inhale, a complete exhale, the release of the exhale muscles, no inhale coming in, and then a pretend inhalation for Uddiyana Bandha. As you practice that pretend inhalation, you're checking to see, can you have it be 
from the pelvic floor up the inner seam of the body, even into the throat. You will not be lifting your chin to make the Uddiyama Bandha. And you'll release it before you're breathless. Right? That's very important. You're not causing yourself to feel breathless. So that's just a way of like checking what research you did today. And then you can take the arms out and come to Shavasana. When you come to Shavasana, let everything relax. The Tristi, the Ujjayi, the Bandhas, the pelvic floor, your mind, your heart. Allow your body to rest a few degrees more heavily, a little deeper surrender.
Rest in the quiet of the body one more minute, observing. The body can be heavy and limp. But your mind, your vitality may be clear, open. And you may lightly deepen your breathing. Gently wiggle your toes and your fingers. And bend your knees. Let's roll to your side. And using both blocks, let's come back to Sukhasana, please. You can put whatever foot you want on the outside, to be on the outside. Try to sense now where is the pendulum of the mind, your attention. Sensing that from within, the central channel can be a place of refuge. Join your hands together at your heart. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Thank you, thank you very much everyone.
Thank you for being here and sharing your practice, your vitality. Oh, it's great to see you, Paula, to see your name here. How oh, wonderful. Thank you. It's good to be here. Okay, how are the hips and the pelvic floor feeling? 